Hey guys, it's Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, we're going to talk about projecting textures. All right, disclaimer first. This is square one. We take a look at the basics, but projected textures is probably on the far end of basics. It's not a difficult thing to do, but you do have to have a good grasp on some of the other things we've covered in square one videos. So you have to know how to use the paint bucket tool. You have to have a basic understanding of geometry. You have to understand how to use the pins to position textures, stuff we've covered in square one videos. Normally we try to make the square one videos stand alone as their own learning experience. This one does require some basic understanding of those previous videos. So if this is your first square one video, you may not grasp all this. If you need to, just run back and watch the paint bucket and the, the uh, repositioning textures, that sort of thing, and uh, then we'll hop in. But for those of you who've been following along and watch all the other Square One videos, let's do it. Okay, so I need first a geometry to put a texture on. So I'm gonna go click down here. I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Actually, before I pull it up, uh, I'm gonna take that rectangle and I'm going to option, I'm gonna move it right next to this one. So I'm going to pull this texture up into a square just so I have a vertical surface to apply a material to. This one right here, though, um, I want to change the surface a little bit. So I'm going to grab a arc. I'm going to click here, pull that arc to the very center. I'm going to hit that midpoint and then pull that arc in. What I want to do now is I want to have an arc going out the other way. So I'm going to click from here to here and start pulling that out. Uh, one of the things that's not happening right now is we talked about an arc, how we can snap to tangent. It'll change colors when it goes to tangent. The problem is I can never find tangent because the line it's looking at is this one right here. But if I go ahead and erase and then go back into arc, pull across like this as I come out, um, I may have to delete this one too and then draw my arc from here to here. There we get that tangent arc. I pull that up the same height, you'll see I get that nice curve. Uh, I do have a line right here, so I might want to get rid of that. Go to Erase and hit my Modifier key, Option on Mac, Control on Windows to smooth that out. All right, now let's apply a material to these two. So first thing we need to do is we need to bring in a material. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go File, Import, and I have a banner right here for Donuts Design and Debate, our bi-weekly podcast. Um, I like that banner, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on here. I'm going to pull it up like this. And it's chopped off a little bit. Um, so here, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and push-pull, and we'll make that a little bit taller so it sits in the middle. We'll pull this up to the same height. All right, so, so far, so good. This is looking good. This is looking just how it should. Um, I'm going to grab all of this, and I'm going to hit Move. And I'm going to use my modifier key to make a copy of it. And we're going to look at the two ways to uh, duplicate these things here. One's right, one's going to be wrong. So right now, let me bring my colors window in here too. So right now you'll see I have this banner as one of my materials in the model. So I'm in my in model colors window. This is on Mac, so the window looks a little different. You'll see the same thing if you go to the default tab bar and expand the colors tab. I have one material. If I go to my paint bucket, and I use the modifier key to pick this material and then apply it right here. It applies okay, but look, it's weird, right? So it's breaking. I have Don Donuts and and debate. So it's it's a mess. It's kind of it's not how it should be. Um, the issue is there's smarts inside the paint bucket tool where it tries to position materials when you apply them based on their orientation. Uh, how they align with the other materials. So if we come up to view and say hidden geometry, see all these different breaks, it's applying to each one of these. And then at some point, it's, I think it's when this arc changed, so it's right here in the middle. So this arc got one instance of this image. And then the second arc where it broke, looks like it started with a different copy. And that's why we had this stagger right here. Either way, regardless of why it happened, it's not what we want. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select this material. I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to say projected. So it's now a projected material. So projected material applies differently from the way that a standard material. Standard material goes on like paint or like a sticker. So it's just laying it on here. 
Projected actually is like a projector shining a light on a surface. So it's as if this were loaded up in a, a movie projector and we're going to shine it on here. So I'm going to again go to Paint Bucket, pick this material, apply it, and look at that. That is actually what we want. That is what projected does. Now, one more note, and this is going to harken back to the video we did, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Um, projected materials are all materials tile infinitely. So this, this material right here I have on here tiles across the entire model, every direction forever. And as you apply it to new materials, it continues to work off of this same grid. So if I right click right here and I say texture position, I can kind of see, okay, that is how it continues to repeat. And this is part of the reason that it causes issues with this other face over here. This one does the same thing, but in this case, you'll see it actually lines up. So if I go to texture position, you can see that this one and this one, see how they perfectly line up? It's a, it's a little fuzzy because it does, you know, warp there, but uh, you can see that, that that tile is what what continues to go across there. I point this out because one of the things that can happen with tiling textures, if I grab this whole thing and I grab it and I slide it over here, and now I pick and apply that texture here. See how it's off? But you can see how it's on that grid still. So it's following that grid. So what you may have to do with, with tiling textures, if I want this grid to project correctly on here, instead of here, what I may have to do is I may have to texture, position this texture, and then move it so that it properly lines up with that piece over there. It's like right there should work. And then if I apply that, it'll actually be correct on that one. So it is a single texture that projects all the way across. Um, once it's applied to the tech, to a surface, so this is now part of the surface. So if I grab this, I can move this anywhere I want and it's not gonna change. It would only change if I was to reapply the material again. Right now, because it's on there, it's gonna stay on there. But when you initially apply it, it will be concerned with that grid that we had in there. I'm gonna undo a couple times so I have that good looking example up on my screen. That's what I want right there. Perfect. So like I said, I debated, I went back and forth and said, is this really a skill builder? Is this a square one? And we've done skill builders on projected textures before. So I felt like this was something we hadn't talked about. And we we're talking about materials anyhow. If this went over your head, I apologize. Don't stress. You can still use SketchUp. You can be great at SketchUp without understanding projected textures at the beginning. Go use it for a while. Use your paint bucket. Use your pins to move textures around and then come back and try projected textures again. If you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, including one of these square ones, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Do you use projected textures? Did I miss something? What else would you like to see in a square one video? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when showing something you want to see. Thank you.